My name is Domenico with Brickhouse Security. So today we're going to be reviewing our uh, fleet demo for tracking. Uh, and we'll begin. Most people, when they begin, will start off at BrickhouseSecurity.com for the purpose of logging in, selecting GPS tracking, entering their in their login information. For our purposes, I'm going to kind of skip over that because the login I'm using isn't tied to an account from that screen. But when you do log in, it will bring you to this screen here and load up to the dashboard. Here we have uh, the dashboard screen. It's kind of our starting screen. It gives you the view of you have your group, which is broken down into device types. You have a summary and some other indicators here, an announcements field. If we have anything to post and announce, we'll fill that box up, and recent alerts. Uh, this screen here, the summary and the little, I guess, dashboard indicators you can customize if you wanted to get rid of the summary and put low battery or fuel consumption, you could do that. But uh, I generally just leave it as is with the summary. Um, as you can see, we've got some speed and some other information here uh, for alerts. We have an alert. So it just gives you some quick information. The device types break down into assets, which are our battery-powered units, uh, such as our Nano 4, our Nano 5, and the Eon. We currently don't actually offer individual tracking solutions. Those were software solutions based on uh, BlackBerry technology. We don't currently offer that as not enough people carry Blackberries anymore. It's just simple. Vehicles, they break down into our hardware and OBD port units. Uh, the OBD port would be our track port too. And our hardware units are our live wire and our live wire micro. And we also have two more fields here. Uh, drivers are assignable users to a vehicle for the purpose of reports. And landmarks. Landmarks are uh, also interchangeable with points of location, or points of interest, I should say. And points of interest are also a uh, possibility for reports or notifications. Um, but we also do have geofences. Uh, geofences are imaginary fences that you can set up. Uh, for their purpose of using them as a trigger for alerts or reports or other uh, needs uh, to in trigger for some, uh, an alert for speeding. So those are some options with geofences, which are very similar to landmarks. I know we prefer geofences here because it, you would set up and customize your fence. It's more custom to your need. So it's, uh, that's why we recommend it. So we're going to kind of just jump in here. I'm going to jump into our vehicle real quick. This gives you a little more information here. So actually, I'll, I'm going to jump around real quick. My apologies. So we're going to go into here. This gives us some information. So for each of these, we have some voltage, some battery level, some quick indicators, some the name of the unit. A I've given it a description so I get more details out of it. Uh, the type of unit, uh, the date it tracked, and our identifier. So we can also, if you, address is if you've assigned information to it. Uh, I'm just going to select this one here. So we can change the name by clicking on the pencil. It brings us to some detail information. Uh, 
if I had the address, I could list it here if there's a specific point that this asset should be. Uh, a contact number, local descriptions, whatever you want it to be really. Uh, you, could, uh, you could put a contact person in there. Uh, this device doesn't particularly read temperature, so it won't have anything. And I'm gonna, so we've changed the name. So if I click back here, we're still under our asset type. And now, instead of Nano V, whatever, it, the name has changed. I've changed the name. Although none of the other information besides the description has changed. So I'm going to also kind of go over to here into our vehicle. I can get rid of my name off of this. Oops. Delete that. Just make sure. We... As you see, the mine VIN number is there. This was pulled uh, by the track port too. Uh, and that is vehicle by vehicle, depending on whether your onboard computer will share that information. I uh, gave it a description. I'll leave the description. I have the year, the make, the model. You can put in the color. Click here and kind of wheel around up and down whether that's the color or not to match your car's color. Um, but we also have additional information. We have, we have the engine information, although that odometer I need to correct. I haven't done that, but I could. Uh, it gives me how long, the engine hours. Um, those engine hours are for when the uh, device was installed. So the, I've driven 19 hours worth of driving since installing this. I can add some fuel information. We'll try a fuel report later on. And then some a whole additional field. We also have drivers, as I was saying before, uh, we can assign drivers, and drivers would be assigned for the purpose of reports. So I'm going to remove this driver. It's asking me to confirm. I'm going to con click to confirm that. Confirm. I'm going to assign a new driver. Actually, I think I want, yeah, I'll leave that. And so we have driver X now. And then it gives us the history of when that last driver was assigned and our current one. Now to finish off, I have to save it. So now it's logged there. Now that I've saved it, it's popped up in the history. We also have, you can add in some maintenance information, which I haven't done, so I'll do a quick Oil change. Say three months from now. And save. Confirm so we can get reminders for oil changes and things as well, and it'll log a history. So I'm going to kind of jump back to our dashboard again. I'm going to click inside the group. So once again, we're now we're in the group editor. Uh, things we can do from here one thing that people love is setting up alerts. They like to be alerted to things. I'm going to just delete some of these real quick. So we've set a few up. So now that I'm in the group, I'm in the group editor. Uh, alerts I set up here apply to the entire group. Uh, the common type of alerts that will apply to all unit types are going to be excessive speed, geofence, and geofence speed. The low battery alert would only apply to battery powered units as the other devices currently don't supply their battery information as they're pulling battery from the vehicle, not necessarily reading the, the vehicle's battery status. Pardon me.
So now we can set up an excessive speed alert. I'll enter in. Seventy seven miles per hour. This current schedule or by default it is seven days a week, twenty four hours a day. And then we have this which is ignore duplicates. Uh, ignore duplicate alerts within minutes. What that means is this is an extra level of filtering. So you can filter out uh, extra alerts that happen over a period of time whether it be one minute or 25, 30 minutes. Uh, the reason you may want to do such a thing is to prevent yourself from kind of filling up your inbox uh, with email alerts. A reasonable uh, ignore duplicates would be five minutes. If they're speeding for five minutes, you won't get five or 10 different emails letting you know that they're speeding. And we can also, for the purpose of the map, choose an icon that would apply. So we're going to select an orange dot here, enter an email address. And then click Save. And the same would apply here for our geofence, except we don't put a value in. This is just for any geofence trigger. We'll review more on that. For this one, I'll choose this nice caution icon so it's very clear. And then we'll enter an address. And we'll save. And the same for your battery alerts. Panic alert is just a, an alert. It's basically a straight trigger. <clears throat> if there were alerts, you can also view some here. <clears throat> Pardon me. Here we go. We have an alert. So I can see an alert from the th about two days ago. So I can look back and see alerts. I'm going to click back to vehicle. Vehicle. So now if there's anything we wanted to see, we could also click on the globe icon next to an item to load into our tracking tab. And this is where ooh, that seems like a lot going on. Let's fix that real quick. There we go. So what we have here now, this is our tracking tab. This is where all the action happens. So we have a control panel here, which gives us some basics. Uh, if I hover over, it gives me some information here. The last time that tracked, the current status. I can get session information by clicking here. It's going to load up. It's a little pop-up, which gives me some information. It gives me an address and direction and other indicators and the basic information again. If there was an alert that happened, this would be highlighted red. Currently, there's no commands to offer, but you can request the location. So I can click on here. And it asks, are you sure you want to request location? It could take several minutes. I'm confirming that. Uh, the reason it may take several minutes is depending upon where they are for a GPS signal or a cellular signal. Um, if it's in the middle of a parking garage, there's a less likelihood that you will get an update as GPS signals are reduced in such a part, like a thick parking structure or a very solid garage. Uh, where GPS signal doesn't happen would be a reason you wouldn't get an update. But otherwise, uh, as long as the device is on, got power, and communicating, you will get an update. 
So we have a couple more things going on here. We have this, uh, which is the countdown. This is the site checking for new information. This is uh, completely separate of the tracking interval of a unit. Uh, this is you telling the site when you want it to check for new information and new details. So you can kind of drop down and change that. You can also stop that counter if you wanted for a moment and then click play again and it will resume. Here we can hide the label or show the label and then show the label regardless of zoom. That's a personal preference. Most people I imagine want to see the label. Then we also have the uh, points of interest. If I click here, it'll show that's where my car goes, I guess. You can Oh, and there we go. We can show the buffer. That is the buffer. It's a square. And we can also show geofences. So a geofence can be a little more precise. <clears throat> As I very much lined out this to be just the lot. As opposed to that point of interest, which had that big block I have all these geofences, which can be, as you see, very concise. So the reason here we have it keep, it keep zooming out <coughs> and zooming back in is because it's refreshing and checking for new information. It's recentering this item on the map. If I clicked here, I can show another item. And if I go into here, it's going to zoom out to show all the items. If I wanted to prevent that but keep the map refreshing so I can follow somebody for a bit, a little manually, I can zoom in here and use this lock so that locks the map so I can control it myself. So I'm going to unlock that. And it's going to zoom out. There we go. I can remove that now. We can also save a map view. It basically saves a cookie to your computer so that you can log on and get the same view. Export to KML. So this will export your tracking information or for the current track here as a KML file. And what a KML file is, it's a Google Earth file. Uh, so it loads up with Google Earth, which is a Google product, uh, but it allows you to save that information. There's a measuring tool so you can measure points here. So I can measure, whoops, click on information. So I can click somewhere on the map. Uh, it just doesn't like that. Double click and it gives me the measurement. That's 0.4 miles. And I can uncheck that when I'm done. I can change the map view, the different layers. So I have uh, Google Satellite and Google Hybrid. So the hybrid view inlays the Google Street view over the satellite view for us. So it makes it easier to recognize, even despite the fact that it's an overview. Uh, we can put a, away this little mini map here which displays the area we're looking at. So this is Jersey City. And if we wanted to expand our view, we can put away the control panel. So that usually uh, stretches out the map for us. Let me try putting that away again. There we go. So now we have a better view of the area. That's more unobstructed without these things in the way. I'm just going to switch back here. So now, another few points to look at. If we click on here, we do also have a few more options. Uh, we have the option to request a location here. You can enter some maintenance information. We have the street view. This is a Google Maps feature. And the vehicle is actually right there, so that is correct. 
if I needed to adjust my view, I can kind of move it around. But it is uh, it is a Google Maps feature, so it is only available where Google has um, sent their trucks down. Then we also have the live tracker. The live tracker is really very similar to that map. It gives it loads up a few different points, but the main purpose of it is to allow you to share. You can enter in an email address. And I, I can't type at the moment. Enter in, say, seven minutes. But you can do it as minutes, hours, days, or weeks, and click share. And you'll, well, there's a problem for the moment. It might have been the email I typed in, but it'll send a link that's similar to this. It loads up that pop-up, which allows you to set the refresh and how many positions you want to show. Although it's, that's all it has for the day. So I'm going to close out of that. and close out of here. We also have the history sub tab. So the history tab will show us information for a certain period of time. By default, it will show the current day. So if I load up today, it's not that interesting. That looks a little odd. So if I do say Saturday, or if I do multiple days, we'll do multiple days, I'm going to search. So here I have the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th. So I have a few different devices here to view. So I'll click on this to view, and I know I have a nice long track, but that's not the track I have. Let's try this. Bear with me. Because I know I didn't drive across the ocean. Uh, I was back at history, and we were looking at a few days ago. There we go. That's that's correct. I wasn't driving across the ocean. I don't have some sort of uh, duck car or anything. So here we have my trip. And this shows the different statuses on the left, as well as the time and the speed. And if you'll notice the main map, as I drag down, it highlights the point of where that is on the main map. I can also play this back as a video, kind of like just a VCR, pop in the tape, hit play, you can forward, rewind, and fast forward. I guess we may have a DVD, but so I can increase the speed. Yep, there we go. Okay. And you can also click on each point for individual information on a particular point. So it shows where that is, and it gives you the information for that point under end. Okay. The other thing we can do is it displays as standard sessions, which are breaking the days up, or if I click here, merge sessions. So I have the 13th here. If I uncheck that, if I click here and click search again, now I have single trips, single 
sessions for the multiple days. So now if I load this up, you'll see a trip that goes both ways. So we're going to load the, somebody else's trip up. Let's see what they've been up to. So now we have a few days here, a very busy loop. And you can also, once again, export the information. So this will export uh, the entire trip. So you can export that KML file. That'll save all of the points of this session. So now I'm going to load us into our routing tab. The routing tab is very uh, straightforward. If I click on a point and click show the nearest items, I'll show six items. Click show closest. And it shows which ones are closest and some direction. You can get direction. So this one's 10 minutes away at 2.2 miles. This one's 13 minutes away. And goes down the list and you can get directions. I can also clear this out and do within a circle. So I can do put the center here. Show closest. and gives me what's within that circle. I can zoom out to show you the circle I drew and it just showed everything that was closest. So now we're going to come to our geofences. Geofences are those triggers uh, for uh, alerting and reporting. So we have We have a lot of geofences set up from all these previous demos. Here's a example. There we go. Where we, we drew one directly around the park just to show you that you can get very concise. Um, I like to think that's pretty close to the park shape. Uh, we can do simple circles. Not sure where this would pull up. Okay, yep. We can clear that out. And then, so there are three types of geofences we're going to create. There are circles, polygons, which are multi-sided, and routes. So I can click anywhere on this map actually yeah I can click click a point here as my center point I can draw a radius and it tells me what that radius is and I can choose to save it so I've used up here, give it a name, add color, change color, whether I want that thicker. So you've got plenty of options to play with. I'm going to close that out. I'm going to clear this again. We're going to do a little differently. So I'm going to click here again. If I want to, I saw what 0.15 is, so I'm going to draw 0.2. So I can enter in how far I want that radius to be and draw it. So now it's a little bit bigger. So you have these options with the circle. And that's, that's if you want something quick and fits your need, you could do that. I'm going to clear that out. So we're going to draw the polygon. So we're going to try and get a little concise here. So I'm going to, if you want something very finely tuned for a purpose, we can click to start in dropping a fence post. We're going to start by left clicking once to begin, left clicking again to start dropping our markers. And as you see, it's starting to take shape. And 
and I'm going to left click and hold to move the map and left click once to drop a marker. I'm going to left click and hold to move the map or if it'll let me left click and hold see that there we go left click again to drop my marker and I'm gonna just keep going till I get everything here and double left click to lock my shape okay so I've I've clicked and made this complex shape here. I'm going to save this. Let's see. And I'm adding to the description. It tells me what group it's going to. By default, it's my group, and I'm going to save. So we've made this new fence. I'm going to clear this out. The last type of fence that we have here is called a route. Um, it's very Straightforward, I like to think, because you're just drawing a line on the road. Left click to begin. And just draw out the route. The route is for the purpose of having a vehicle that you know is going to be going a certain way. We're supposed to travel in along a route that's predefined by you. I'm double click and save that line. Um, the reason is you give it a buffer. That buffer is in miles. Uh, the reason you give it that buffer, it's a trigger. So you would be alerted if they leave this route. Uh, you're giving them a buffer to stop for food, for gas, for uh, rest, for uh, detour, or any reason they would normally stop. But if they've exceeded that, you get an alert letting you know they've exceeded that allotment and would therefore need to be you get an alert and you can check on them to see why did you deviate from the route what are you okay is there anything going on it's usually for a truck that's going a specific uh, route that you've drawn and that's the purpose of that once we have our fences created then we need to assign them so they create this one-to-one -one relationship. I know I already have a few fences already set up, but I'll assign another one. So we could do, so I have plenty of fences here that I've already created. So I can click any of these or multiple. It gives us the options here on what the trigger, so the area is defined. Now the next part is the action. Uh, what happens when it enters the fence? What happens when, if you want, you can choose when it exits the fence, or both. Um, the reason you may choose none is you want to set up a speed. Uh, so if we choose both, we also have time in and time out. These are kind of like grace periods, so it can be out for X amount of time before it triggers, or in before it triggers, and out X amount of time before it triggers the geofence alert and the same here is uh, the speed would apply for your geofence speed and you could set a minimum speed and maximum speed if it exceeds that maximum speed therefore it would trigger your geofence speed alert uh, but there are also levels of filtering as well in a way that the geofence if it doesn't exist if it hit if it's in that minimum uh, you check off the days you want this geofence to exist so that it So you set off Monday through Sunday. By default, it gives you 24 hours a day. So I'm going to save that. OK. 
Okay. So if we haven't set it up already for these alerts, you would come to Dashboard and set up your alert. Now you can also set up an alert on the specific individual by clicking the pencil mark again next to an item and specifically choosing set up alerts. It's a second level of alert, so I can set up a geofence for somebody else here. And once again, I can just give it an icon, be the same, so there's no question, and save. So this is the second level of alerts, and I've also saved my, that's how to set up a geofence alert to be, receive an email to know if one of those is triggered. Currently workflow doesn't apply, but reports do, so we're going to come to reports now. So we have a list, a lengthy list of reports here. Now those are from previous uh, demos that I've run. Most reports start out as a template. And you have a list of templates here that you can work with. Uh, the most common ones that people request are the detailed activity and detailed tracking. Uh, one of the main differences between these two is one, uh, the way they present the information. They have similar information. One color codes the information. One gives you more detail about just the specific uh, addresses. So we'll do a detailed tracking report. You can get all this information and customize it. As I have one group, I can get rid of that. So you can kind of take things away if you don't feel you need them. Next, I can choose a custom date range. I can select any one of these in the group. I can select multiple in the group. I'm actually going to change this date range because that's going to take a bit. We'll do the last 24 hours. It says stop threshold. I'm telling this site that for the purpose of the report what I'm defining as a stop. I'm going to say a stop is five minutes and then movement threshold. I'm going to say two minutes. I'll use the ignition sensor when available and click next. How do I want this report? Do I want this as, is this, is this the type of report that lurks well as a grid or include a chart? Uh, this, this is a grid because charting this is, sounds silly because this, the type of information. So we're going to click next. Let's hope it lets me. There we go. So now it's running this report for those items. So here we have, uh, I guess, our, our information. So it does, if you notice, it said tow. So that we, we would like to check because that's probably related to the ignition sensor. So it's probably not sensing an ignition, but it's, it knows it's in motion. So therefore, it's decided that this is towing. Um, we do keep information on this site for 90 days. Uh, that's the reason you want to export your data for your history. Uh, one of the ways you can do it is saving a report or previously shown the tracking tab where you can export the history. You do have the option to export this as a PDF, Excel formats, rich text formats, web formats, plain text, uh, 
comma separated value, which is which generally loads up in Excel or as a text and image. So you have plenty of options to save this report type and then save this to disk or export, or short, export it and show it in a new window where you can choose to save it from there. And then you can print it and display, search. <laughs> so let's try a different type of report. We're going to go to my templates again. I'm going to try a few. Let's see if we can do a fuel usage. So I'll do the last seven days. So I know I put information in for that. And we're going to run. We can try to do this as a chart. We'll do, so we select our values. We want to do date, and distance. All right, we'll try that. Uh, please select the chart type. Oh, I didn't do that. So we'll do one of those. Let's go. So now it's trying to load this information. <laughs> okay, so I guess this is our chart of data for fuel. So here we have the, the distance traveled, the time, the speed, and the amount of fuel drop. Let's see if I can find. Just kind of reviewing through, see if it can. And that gives us the estimated fuel usage. I'm just trying. Should, should have come across a summary, but I guess it did not. All right. I'm going to load up a quickly one of our uh, track reports. We don't need the city and state as it loads that already into the address. And I don't need the group, so I can customize that. Uh, So then I'm going to run this. <laughs> so it loads up my trip, giving me the date, 
date and time, which vehicle, driver, and also has an alerts column, ignition on, tells you my ignition is on, I guess. So let's go to the summary. Which is not applicable. Oh, it gives me uh, the total distance, the duration, and stops in between. Because I guess I, I did stop. Let's see if we can find where that was. Actually, it should be. Oh, there we go. That was off. And we're back on and driving. So that's a tracking detailed tracking report. And we do have a couple of other ones to play with. Mileage by state. Okay. You could just do a start and stop. Straightforward. Uh, let's see. And do we have any questions right now? Questions? As there are no, as our participant has left, I guess we'll end for the day. Thank you and have a great day.